brief PowerPoint, we're going to summarize some of the important concepts from the first three sections of the chapter of your text entitled Cognitive Processes. We need to start with defining some words. When we're discussing cognition, and it's really important to, to define what we mean by cognition, but also to identify other closely related concepts. One of these concepts is perception. A definition of perception is the process of acquiring information about the environment through the senses and interpreting sensory information in a meaningful way. An individual's abilities to take in and process information are dependent on the ability to see, hear, smell, touch, and taste. And these are aspects of a person's health that we are exploring in our sensory perceptual content area. But perception is a necessary antecedent or precursor to cognition. Cognition is the act or process of understanding and knowing, or, according to our textbook, the systematic way in which we think, reason, and use language. So particularly in that first definition, you can see the tie-in to perception. Cognition is um, something that happens after we perceive something through our senses. And from that second definition, it is clear that the concept of cognition is also closely intertwined with issues of communication. Some other concepts that are related to cognition include consciousness or level of awareness, attention or the ability to focus on sensory input, memory, recalling a thought, learning, the ability to store memories. So all of these concepts are very much intertwined as we're looking at the concept of cognition. There are a number of different anatomical structures involved with cognition. First, those sensory um, perceptors, receptors that are important as a part of perception. Um, sensory receptors are divided into three different types in your book. First are extraoceptors, which are triggered by stimuli from the environment. So, for example, in our eyes, that would be the rods and cones or the different aspects of our ears that are receiving sound, touch receptors, our taste buds, etc. Another type of receptors are proprioceptors, and these are receptors that are responsible for our balance, our coordination of movement, understanding our position. And then third are the interoceptors, which are located in our deep tissue. We also have central nervous system processing structures that are important. We have, first, the cerebellum, which plays a, a, an important role in proprioception. We have our reticular activating system, or RAS, also called the reticular formation. This is a cluster of neurons that form a neurologic pathway. That pathway extends from the upper pons to the thalamus and hypothalamus. And it has some very important functions. It's responsible for the arousal or wakefulness component of our consciousness. And it's also the input center that receives sensory input from different peripheral sensory receptors and then sends projections on to our cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is the last important anatomical structure um, in terms of consciousness. The cerebral cortex is really responsible for our content of consciousness. That includes awareness and thought processes. There are specific areas in the cortex that are responsible for processing specific sensory um, signals, um, as well as areas responsible for motor function. And I'm sure you're very familiar with these. We have our visual cortex in the occipital lobe. Um, the motor areas are delineated here in this picture. It's part of the parietal lobe. Um, we have our auditory processing that happens in the temporal lobe. You can see 
um, that there are areas specific for language processing. That's in the left hemisphere in, in most right-handed people. It's also in the left hemisphere for most left-handed people, but um, there's, it's not quite as strong a differential. So make sure that you take some time to just look through this mapping um, and just get a general idea of some of these cortical structures that are important related to this concept. So what is it that causes a change in mental status? When we're looking at cognition, what are, are some factors that cause changes in mental status? Well, probably first and foremost would be ischemia, cerebral ischemia. The brain has a very high oxygen requirement, uses about 20% of our body's total oxygen. So any condition that leads to hypoxia will affect brain function. That can be inadequate oxygen in the inspired air, for example, if someone's at a high altitude. It can be lung disease that impairs oxygen exchange in the alveoli, such as COPD. It could be poor oxygen carrying capacity in the blood, such as what we see with anemia. Uh, perhaps it is because of uh, poor systemic circulation with what we see with heart failure or decreased local perfusion of the brain, something we might see with this thrombotic stroke. So cerebral ischemia will be the most common cause of changes in mental status. But there are many other factors, too, that affect mental status. Um, some fall into the nutrition and metabolism pattern. One example um, is that the, the brain is a, also a big glucose hog. It uses about 25% of the total body glucose usage. So hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia can cause changes in cognition. Another example would be um, changes in liver function. If the liver is failing and ammonia increases, um, ammonia is very caustic to the brain and that causes what we call a hepatic encephalopathy. Fluid and electrolyte imbalances can also cause changes in mental status, particularly sodium levels. Infections can cause changes in mental status. That can be directly in the brain, like an encephalitis, or it can be a systemic infection. A very common cause of confusion in the elderly is a urinary tract infection. Inadequate sleep and rest uh, can cause changes in mental status. You've all experienced that, maybe very recently. Uh, we especially need our REM sleep, and, and so very commonly we see with a, a lack of sleep, there are changes in mental status. Something that many nurses experience um, because of our rotating shifts. Some other causes include degenerative disorders, such as a loss of functional brain tissue, um, different medications, whether they have a direct effect on the CNS or it's a side effect from a, a medication, um, head trauma and, and that direct damage to brain tissue, sensory overload that we might see with excessive environmental stimuli, Sometimes uh, we see changes in mental status because of an unfamiliar environment. So if you combine, um, say, the unfamiliar environment of being hospitalized together with the sensory overload that people often experience in hospitals, you can see why we might frequently see changes in mental status in hospitalized patients. Pain can also impair memory and processing, and that can be physical pain or it can be emotional pain. Many of these causal factors interrelate and or influence cognition simultaneously. For the next portion of this learning module, you're going to explore alterations in cognitive function. There are some general observations that are manifestations of impaired cognition. Things like confusion 
and inability to follow commands. Answering questions in a vague way, oftentimes done to mask confusion or to mask memory loss. Another sign and symptom of alternate um, altered cognitive function is agitation or irritability, and that's often rooted in fear. Other people re will report hallucinations, which are perceptions that arise from a person's own thoughts or delusions, false fixed beliefs. Not everybody is going to, to exhibit all of these, but these are some general observations that we often see with altered cognitive function. Three major impairments associated with altered cognition um, are often referred to as the three Ds. These are delirium, dementia, and depression. It's important to understand each of these and to be able to differentiate between them. So next you're going to move to studying on your own, the section on altered cognitive function paying particular attention to the differentiation of the three Ds. Enjoy your studies.